Now I'm going to show you guys one of the most critical parts of the portrait tattoo, and that is a stencil. So I'm going to place my reference on top of the carbon paper. Now all the techniques that are out there, this is one I find to be the easiest. It's more hands-on, it's more direct. I mean, you're literally tracing on top of the reference, leaving your stencil marking on the back. I like to use a number seven lead pencil just to have a soft touch. Keep it in mind, you're going to want to capture every single element of detail you can. This is pretty much going to be your roadmap for the stencil. You want to make sure you capture every element of detail. I'm going to work on the face right now, you guys, and uh, get in every element possible. Your portrait's going to be really only as good as your stencil. I mean, especially when you're doing something so exact. If it's going to be something exact, then you want to get it as exact as possible. One of the reasons why I like to do it this way, there's no worrying about registration or being off registration as far as the stencil's concerned. You could move this all around, and it's still going to be exactly what you need it to be. There's a lot of different techniques to pick up shadowing. Mine's kind of like, I like to do lines and dots. So when I put the stencil on, it kind of reminds me that whatever's lined or dotted is a shadow. You want to pick up every amount of detail. I mean, not leaving anything out. You want to fine tooth comb this thing, make it perfect. Little elements right there. Get into the nooks and crannies. All this information is important. Like I said, even though you have your reference right in front of you, you have to keep in mind you want to align your reference with your stencil. It makes it a lot easier than not having the information there because you're doing a portrait tattoo. You're not doing a portrait painting or drawing. Something like that you can come up to the next day and correct or you can erase or you can paint over. But when you're dealing with skin, there is no cheating. There is no shortcut. You know, if you're doing a portrait drawing or a portrait painting, you know you can come back to those things and fix them up and change them around. But you got one shot at a portrait tattoo. There's no eraser. There's no room for error. Very important to make sure you pick a good reference. Make sure you pick a piece that's detailed enough. You want to see a crisp piece. You want to make sure that it's just basically detailed enough to where you can see crisp eyes and mouth and things like that. You want to make sure that you pick the right portrait. A lot of times I'll have the customer bring back another piece if it doesn't work. Very important to dot where the highlights are going to be. I definitely choose the dot method on that. It just tells me once again when you flip it over and definitely put it on the skin, when you see those dots it implies that they're highlights. Now this stencil is going to take me a while and keep in mind it's a catch-22. The longer it takes to make the stencil, the quicker your tattoo will be. The quicker it takes to make your stencil, the longer the tattoo will take. Why? Because you're going to have to constantly reference back and forth because you didn't lay your roadmaps down properly. So very important to lay your roadmaps down very proper, getting every inch of detail. You know, for example, I didn't get that last part of the nose right there. But one of the ways you want to double check, you want to flip this around and lay this on a light table. You know, any light table will work. You just want to lay it on a light table. You want to look through the painting, or the reference, I should say. You want to make sure that you got every ounce of detail. For example, obviously I got this eye. I didn't get that eye yet. Now if I was to lay this on a light table, I, I would see that. But that goes for every little nook and cranny and wrinkle. You just want to basically nail every amount of detail. We'll flip it back over. Start on the other eye. Remember one thing as well, don't try to add your own input to this piece. Don't try to add your own style to your eyes or to your lips or how you do things. You want to do it exactly what you see nothing else. Obviously what I'm about to tell you guys, you guys probably already know, but when a client or a customer comes in and they bring an original, you want to make a copy of that. Before you start the stencil, just nail down the size options with your client and make sure that you're not doing it on the original. On that note, you want to make a copy at uh, a place like Kinko's or a place that has a photocopier machine, something that can give you enough detail that you need. Definitely not a standard machine, not a standard copy machine will do. Something else to talk about is sometimes a client will bring in a picture that's not workable. And I'll tell you what, there's a lot of tattoo artists out there that will still attempt to do the tattoo. All I can say is I won't do that. Uh, the other day I had a client come in and she brought a portrait of her grandpa the size of a quarter. I looked at it and I knew it wouldn't blow up right. I knew it wouldn't be enough detail when I enlarged it in the copy machine, but uh, just to kind of show her what I was talking about, I enlarged it. And uh, yeah, sure enough, it came out really blurry. It was pretty much undoable. She was really adamant about the piece. You know, she was trying to talk me into it. And I basically said, look, there's no way to talk me into doing this piece. It's just not going to work. So just make sure that you guys are always firm with your customers when you know that it's not going to work. It's better to not do a wrong portrait than to do it and have it not come out the way you want. So never ever be afraid to make the customer go search for better references.
grab that highlight on the nose right there. I mean, I'm spending a lot, a lot of time on the face here, and keep in mind this face isn't that big. Let's go ahead and turn it around and see what we got. Actually, let's go ahead and jump over here to the glass. Sometimes I'll stop what I'm doing, I'll jump over to something else, and then what that does is it kind of pulls me into something new so that when I go back to the face, I'll immediately see things that I didn't get. So we're gonna go to the glass right here, approaching it the same way as we did the face. Same thing with the reflections, I like to use the dots. This isn't your average face, it's not just a face, so we got all these elements. So this stencil is going to take a little bit longer, but keep in mind I would say your average size stencil would probably be about the size of your hand, close fist, and a face that size, you should spend at least 20 to 30 minutes on a stencil. I mean literally master it like you're a photocopy machine. Hand stencils is the way to go for me, there's a lot of other ways to do them, but when you do a hand stencil versus tracing it and putting it through a stencil machine, you just have more control. You know, for example, I, I could move this any way I want, and it's still going to come out exactly perfect. You know what I mean? There's no registration issues to worry about like you would have if you were tracing this with uh, tracing paper. So a good 20 to 30 minutes is what you want to spend on your average portrait stencil. This right here, however, will probably take me 45 minutes. This button is dark right there. There's nothing right there. It picks up again some dark shadows, disappears. There's two little dots that imply some shadowing. Then you got the four holes where the thread goes through. These two top ones are sort of bleeding together in the photograph. Sort of the same in the bottom. Now in reality, these four holes that the thread goes through, they're spaced apart evenly. But you gotta tell yourself you're doing what you see, not what you know to be correct. I'll see people do stencils of portraits. They'll just leave a lot of information out. They'll just kind of rush the stencil, or they'll do their own version of the stencil. For example, in their mind, they'll see lines, and on the reference, it's exact lines. But what they'll do is they'll go towards their mind and just start doing lines, and uh, we cannot do that. If you want to be a great portrait artist, you have to do only what you see. Portrait tattoos are stressful. They really can take it out of you. I mean, usually when I do a portrait, that's the only tattoo I do for the day. The reason why it takes a lot out of you is because you're doing it the right way. Obviously, if you get done quick or it didn't take that much to do it, you're not going to be winded. But I'll tell you what, when you do a portrait the right way, you're going to be winded. So we're going to be working on the stencil for another half an hour or so. We're going to go ahead and put all of our energy into the stencil, and then we're going to go ahead and start the tattoo. Now that we have the stencil done, the best way to cut the stencil out would be to cut it out from the back. So that way you can kind of make sure you don't overcut or undercut the stencil because the less paper you have around it, easier it is to apply, especially when you're measuring an area. So I'm cutting around the stencil really close. Like I said before, the less extra paper you have, the easier it is to apply on the skin. Makes it easier to measure. And when you're doing a portrait, your whole goal is to make it easy as possible on you because portraits are the hardest tattoo to do. And sometimes the stress can make you not do your best job. So you're basically trying to cut out the stress with as many tricks as you know about. So before I would even make the stencil, one thing to consider is just measurements. Measure the piece with a copy machine, blow it up a, a few different sizes that you think that might be the best size. And then you'll measure the skin, you know, when I say measure, we're talking about eyeballing, kind of putting copies on the skin and, and measuring it such like this. Okay, now what we're gonna do is, uh, once the stencil's done, one little trick I learned a long time ago is just to give it some stress points by little cuts like that. So when you wrap it around the skin, it folds a little bit easier without distorting the stencil because if the stencil's not put on right, it can affect the final outcome of the piece. Now, before I start the tattoo, definitely want to talk about why I have two different references. I have a dark reference that I turned up the contrast on the computer before I printed it. 
so that I could see every possible nook and cranny of the shading. That way I could make sure that the end result has as much detail as possible. Then I have the lighter version so that I could see what the darker version didn't give me, the, the details and the darks and the shadows. Something like this where there's a, there's a lot of black and a lot of dark, you want to have two different references just to kind of compare the two and give yourself as much information as possible so that when you're referencing, you can go off of both. So now that we got the light and the dark reference, I'm ready to go. Now I can give myself as much information as I need to pull this off correctly. Your outcome is only as good as your stencil is. When you're doing a portrait, it's one of those tattoos where you don't want to have to rely on freehand. Although it is possible, it's just more stress and more time for the tattoo. One more note about your photo reference. You want to make sure that your reference is detailed and you want to make sure that you know that the reason why that is is because it's only going to come out as good as your reference. What I mean by that is sometimes people come in with a small portrait. By the time you blow it up, it's fuzzy. And there's a lot of people that attempt portraits out there from bad reference and then they are not happy with their final result. There's only one way to do a portrait and it's called the right way. It has to be exactly like it or you as an artist aren't going to feel like you did your best job. Now to apply the stencil, my favorite stuff is uh, it's called stencil stuff. You can get it online, stencilstuff.net. The reason why I like this stuff, uh, there's a lot of products out there, but what I found with this product is that, especially on a portrait, you don't want to lose your stencil. Everybody that's been tattooing can uh, remember the times when they've lost their stencil. It's all right when you're doing a rose or a heart, something you could for sure freehand right away to fix, but when you're doing a stencil, you don't want to lose anything because then you're sacrificing the final outcome. So this stuff really, really makes it stick, it really makes it stay as long as you need it to. Okay, now that I've measured his leg previously, uh, we're just going to put it on. I like working on legs just for that reason. It's just a good, good area to cover. Gently put it on, just kind of let it hit in the middle. Kind of hold it there, not really in a rush. You don't, you don't want to bend it. I usually put the middle on and I fold either the left or right side, doesn't matter. What this does is it ensures you're not going to distort your stencil. After I fold the right side, I'll pick it up a little bit just to give it some give. And then I'll start to fold the other side. Remembering that the better the stencil is, the better the final result will be. Now that right there is perfect. 